I would like to give a huge shout out to my brand new patron, Poe Harris, and our new tool partner, Power Pro, as well as the rest of all of my support. Thank you guys very much. Cabinetry basics. That's what we're gonna go over in this episode of this SketchUp tutorial. going to go too terribly in depth with this and there's a couple of things that I forgot including the cabinet bottom and you'll see as you're watching that I forgot to push it back to allow for discrepancies in the wall uh, so do apologize for that um, but this is just going to be the basic layout of cabinetry so you know exactly what you're going to be cutting when you get to the shop uh, I'm not going to go into like joinery and pocket screws and things like that because the techniques that I've shown you in prior videos can be extrapolated and applied to this particular tutorial as well. I don't want to make this terribly long so I think this video is roughly about 20 minutes. So just follow along with the tutorial and save this as you go. This will not affect any tutorials that we've done in the past so you can start a brand new file and then just save it as we go and then we'll add the upper cabinetry in the next tutorial. This is just cabinetry basics so you guys can make your own. Uh, we're gonna start, like I said, with the base cabinet. And um, I'm gonna flip between screens. I'm gonna leave this one up just so you guys can see it as reference and we're going to build one in another window. So we're gonna start with the cabinet side. Now, a typical cabinet depth, you're going to have anywhere between a 20 inch drawer slide and a 22 inch drawer slide and the cabinet depth is gonna be roughly about 23 inches because the countertop will probably be about 24 inches and it will have a one inch overhang in the front. So you kinda of need to decide how deep you want to make your cabinets by thinking about what depth of a drawer that you want in your cabinet. Typical cabinet drawer slides are about 20 inches, but as you can imagine with a 23 inch deep cabinet, you have three inches of wasted space that you could better utilize. So I like to try and push my cabinet drawers as far back as I possibly can so I can utilize as much real estate as possible in that cabinet. As long as you don't have anything that's impeding your drawer from being pushed all the way back in, there's no reason why you couldn't have a 22 inch slide. Uh, so the cabinet side that I have is 22 and a quarter inches deep. Now I made this one incorrectly, Just it's just a tutorial. Um, a typical cabinet height is 36 inches and that includes countertop which is usually an inch and a half so a typical uh, cabinet height um, if you take off that inch and a half will probably be about 34 and a half inches so like right there is typically where you would have a cabinet height to accommodate your countertop so we're going to make ours the way it needs to be which is 34 and a half so I've already started out by drawing some guidelines over here. This is three quarters of an inch wide, and this is the uh, depth of the cabinet, which was 22 and a quarter inches deep from the very front. Now this does not include the face frame, so uh, don't think that I screwed up there. But we're going to push pull that rectangle that we drew, 34 and a half inches tall. So there is our cabinet side. And the toe kick is also a standard. So I'm going to flip over to a screen that I pulled up earlier. A typical toe kick uh, optimal height is usually about three inches for a depth, excuse me, for depth, not a height. Um, and then the optimal height is three and a half inches. So you can kind of see a little diagram right there. So uh, it's about three inches deep and three and a half inches tall. So let's go ahead and cut that out. Whoop. Here we go. So we'll measure back three inches, but we're gonna have a three uh, three quarter inch face frame attached to that. So let's push it back 0.75 and get rid of that first line. If you already know the measurement, you don't have to do two lines. This is just to help you guys visualize what we're trying to do. So this should be two and a quarter. Now we're going to measure up three and a half inches. And then using our rectangle tool, take that section out 0.75 deep, and now we're left with our toe kick cutout. Get rid of my guidelines by hitting Shift D. So there's our cabinet side. That's pretty much all you have to do as far as removing material. Now, now let's make this a component. Um, we'll call it cabinet side. 
and let's make a copy of it. Now, your cabinet width is totally up to you. We're gonna call this one 30 inches wide. Just so we have a, a pretty decent size cabinet. So we've got our two cabinet sides. I need to flip this one actually. Oop. Need to flip it along the red axis so I can uh, make sure that the insides face each other. So now if I change anything here on this side, it will reflect on the inside of this one as well. Just gotta make sure that you do that. So now let's do uh, some face frames. So we're gonna start with the style. It goes usually to the top of the cabinet, to the very bottom of the toe kick uh, upper portion. <clears throat> now rails and styles are typically about two and a quarter inches wide. So let's make a reference, 2.25, and we'll turn our rectangle function on, and we're gonna just draw down to the edge of the cabinet right here. Just pop it at that corner and then we'll pull it out 0.75 inches and then we'll come over here to the side and pull it over to our reference line so there is our first style let's make it a component already style I did some playing around earlier so now there will be a slight overhang of usually about an eighth of an inch like this that way, whenever you mount your cabinets together, the adjacent cabinet that also has the overhang will touch the face frame, but your cabinet sides won't touch in case there's any inconsistencies with the plywood. Uh, that way, they'll mount a lot more flush together and there won't be things that will keep them apart. So usually when you see a cabinet because of the countertop in place, you don't see the sides anyway, so you'll never know the gap was there. So always give yourself about an eighth inch overhang off the side of your cabinet. So now let's copy this style and do the same thing on the other side with an eighth inch gap. Let's touch that corner right there, copy with our option key. Pop it right there and then let's move it over the extra eighth inch like that. So now let's do our, our rail the same way. It will intersect our style. So just drop down here 2.25 inches and turn our rectangle function on and draw from that corner to the intersecting guideline corner. Turn our push-pull function on and push it back. You can snap it to the line or you can type in 0.75, doesn't matter. And let's save that as a component. Call it rail. Now, I'm gonna get rid of those guidelines, don't need them. Now the, um, Typical opening for a drawer, because you usually have one drawer in a, a lower cabinet like this, um, is usually about six inches deep, um, or six inches wide, I should say, for the opening. So we'll make a six inch opening using our guideline like that, and we can just simply copy our rail component that we have here and drop it down to that six inch mark. This will allow you to make about a five and a quarter to five and a half inch deep drawer, uh, just on the outside dimensions and you can make it as deep as a 22 inch drawer slide. And we went over drawer dimensions in prior videos. If you haven't seen that yet, you can find that in this uh, little window that I put right up here. And uh, you can click on the card and that'll take you to it too. We did many types of joinery on the drawers, um, but I also showed you how to start measuring uh, and lay them out for a typical cabinet opening. So now that we have that, let's make a copy for the lower rail like that okay now the bottom of a cabinet usually is flush with the very top of that rail so you could lay out some guidelines like this and then draw you down a 0.75 gap like this and that will be where your dado needs to be or just where your bottom needs to intersect. That way it is completely flush with the very top of your uh, bottom rail. So we can go ahead and make that right now. Or you could, if you want to utilize more real estate room, you could drop the location of the, of the bottom down by making this particular rail thinner. Uh, this does not necessarily have a standard. You could make it one inch wide 
and then gain another inch of real estate or an inch and a quarter rather of real estate in your cabinet storage or you can make them all the same. Uh, that's completely up to you, especially since you're making these yourself. So we can go ahead and make a drawer bottom like this and then pull it over to the cabinet side. And like I said, if you have dados in the cabinet side, you can make them and then push the drawer bottom into those dados and that will give you an exact measurement of what you need to cut. Otherwise, you'll have pocket screws in the bottom side of this going into the cabinet side. Same goes for the face frames. Um, if you don't use biscuits or slot cutters or anything like that, you'll have um, pocket screws going into the bottom like this one here. Um, I think I have a dado for this one. So here's an example of the dado being used like that. And then the face frames, um, that's the toe kick right there. It got screwed in. We'll, we'll go over that here in a minute. But there is the pocket screws going in holding the face frame on. Okay? So let me back out of that and go back into our cabinet we're working on. So like I said, you can do dados if you like. If not, don't worry about it. Just use pocket screws. So now we've got the drawer bottom, or excuse me, the cabinet bottom. We don't necessarily need a divider right here because the drawer will be mounted to slides and it will just slide freely in this space. But since we have a face frame, usually a drawer slide mounts to the inside portion of the face frame right in this area, and it usually attaches to the cabinet back or a stud in your wall. Now, if you don't want to make a solid back so your drawer slide can mount to it, you can just use little mounting, uh, basically mounting cleats that take the place of the cabinet back. So let's go ahead and make some more stability things. Now, if you want to cut uh, some corners, I guess, on material, you can make some little brackets, little triangular brackets. Let me make a good line here. Here we go. Let's make a, let's see what three inches looks like. Yeah, that might be all right. Do three inches that way, three inches this way, and I'll just draw a simple line across the two and then connect the points to make a triangle and then make a 0.75 deep little triangular brace just like that. We'll save that as a component. Triangle brace. Then we'll copy that, drag it over to the other side like that. And then I'll use my shift R, which is my rotate function and rotate it to where it intersects like that. So now I've got two triangular braces Get rid of my guidelines. All right, now we're gonna put a cross brace that will be going vertical. So let's do, um, zoom in a little bit. Let me drop down a reference on my tape measure function here of, let's do four inches. This is totally arbitrary. You can make this whatever you like. Back out and go to my next side here and pop a four inch wide plank that is 0.75 deep with the push pull function. That can be pocket screwed. Now it doesn't uh, need to be sitting right flush with the edge because if you have inconsistencies in your wall, uh, the only thing that really needs to touch the wall are the cabinet sides. This right here touching the wall as well, if you have a bow in your wall, can be a problem. So push it back about a half an inch. Let's save it as a component and we'll call it just uh, mount. Push it back half of an inch and we'll leave it like that. You can pocket screw it in place. And what we need now for the drawer hardware, uh, the slide to be able to mount to something, we need another piece that goes uh, vertical that's roughly about the same uh, same width, I guess we could say. So let's get rid of that guideline. Let's just copy this particular mount. We'll drag it down. And then we'll rotate using those pluses right there. And then drag it over. Now because we copied this, I don't want it to affect the first one, so we need to make this one unique. And then we'll push-pull it to the very bottom of the cabinet bottom. 
go into the edit part of the component and snap it to the line right there and you'll pocket screw those into place into the drawer or the cabinet bottom as well as into that mount up there now let's copy this one and we'll drag it over and then we'll snap it to that corner right there so that will give the drawer hardware something to snap to this will be your mount to the wall and if you so chose you can put another mount in the very bottom of the cabinet so we can push pull this one up four inches and you can copy this upper one and drag it to the very bottom of your cabinet base and that way you can have two points of mounting which is probably recommended so we can do that real quick by going into that component of that mount and drag it up four inches it will affect the other one because it was a copy of it and then just highlight that one we'll go over here there we go drag it down and pop it to the corner so there are two mounting points that we can mount this cabinet to the wall so that is a way to get around not having a solid back and typically you won't find lower cabinets with a solid back um, it's just a lot of material that you have to use. Half inch plywood that, uh, as you can tell, with a 30 inch cabinet, that will take a lot of plywood away uh, from your stash. So that right there is a basic cabinet. You can use another piece of plywood to enclose your toe kick right here. It can be half inch, it can be three quarters of an inch. It does not matter. I'm just popping a three quarter inch line right there. Come up here. There we go. This should enclose it just fine. There we go. Make that a component. Call it toe kick. And then pocket screw that on the back side to the side of the cabinet to keep them all hidden. And all of your pocket screws for all these mounts, as well as if you want to pocket screw the face frames together, they'll be all on the back side and they won't be seen by the naked eye when you go to look inside this cabinet. So I'm gonna go back to my model and zoom out and go to the very front of the cabinet. And as you can see, there are no pocket screws visible. Everything is hidden. But when I start to zoom around, you can see pocket screws on the side of the cabinet. There's pocket screws on the underside of my toe kit cover on all the mount uh, back sides. See, I even put a mount up here just to keep the cabinet square. This is optional, you don't necessarily have to have it, but with the countertop in place, they will be hidden. The triangular brackets, instead of doing that, I went ahead and put another cross piece that's all pocket screwed. That will give this face frame here some stability, so that is an option you can do as well. And then whenever you install your drawers and you have those laid out, you can do either a drawer that's in the top section right here only, or since you have that mounting bracket that we put in the back side right here, you can add more drawers and then just use cabinet doors to cover them up. The main trick is using hardware that allows the cabinet door to open completely out of the way so the drawer slides do not hit it. If you're retrofitting some cabinets that have some hardware that's already existing that don't do that, then you have to push the cabinet uh, or push your drawer sides in a little bit more so they can be accepted by that cabinet door and not hit, uh, not hit the door whenever you go to pull the drawer out. Um, that can be a little tricky. All right, that's it. Base Cabinetry 101. You guys saw how to lay it out and um, hopefully you saw the mistake that I made. And like I said, save this right now, and then we'll apply the upper cabinetry basics to the next episode. It's gonna be pretty cool to see how kitchens are laid out using this software. Well, I hope you guys like this episode. Be sure and click over here for all of my prior episodes. You can hit that subscribe circle that you see in the center. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next build. Boom!